first of all we have this table here you have the reflection on the table you have the audio spectrum although that is for another video we have uh, this background with the fans rotating around you have the smoke in the background and you have the wall in the background so all of those i'm gonna show you how i uh, made them so here is the background and as you can see it's just a wall with a hole and this hole it has a uh, some bit of texture which i overlaid on top of it and i made it like this so this is the texture in order to get this cut out i used an effect it's called set mat then uh, i applied a curve so this set mat shows if i switch it off you can see the texture and uh, i made it a little bit contrasty by applying a curves then the set mat yeah then in order to hide it so that you can also bring back the background I changed the blend mode to overlay that's uh, how I came to that point uh, so next I have the, the smoke as you may see the smoke over here yeah to get to this point I had a couple of layers but to simplify my life I rendered it out so that I can only have one layer to do all this but I'm gonna show you how all these layers came together first of all here is the hind wall I have the comb of the hind wall it's a bit dark because I applied a curve adjustment layer so there it is so this is the curves over there and then I got multiple layers of smoke okay they were so small so I had to duplicate it and I wanted them side by side that's why you'll find that they're gonna be there multiple times I'm having multiple layers of uh, smoke it's the same smoke Yes, if I could solo it here to show you how it uh, it looks like, you will see this right here is the smoke. Uh, I could just increase the transparency and you see how it is. It is just a simple smoke video. It just looks like that. So I got multiple footages of smoke. It's the same but I duplicated it so that I could add more smoke because I wanted it to continue on and on and on. So, but in order for it to fit in the background, yeah, I had to reduce the opacity to 15. So when I put everything back on, you can see the smoke in order to create that atmosphere in the background. So next, I, uh, I also had to make up this front part as you, you can see it here, but I, I just had a PNG image which I designed in uh, Photoshop and I also imported it in After Effects to make it a little bit 3D looking. So there you have it, that's how it looks like. So it's just an, an image, okay? It's just a PNG image, it has no background. As you can see when I turn off the transparency, it has no background. And well, it was more like a concept art because it has also the fans but it's just an image but the real image which I used it had no fans uh, because the fans were supposed to be rotating or spinning that's why they had to be on a single layer or their own layer so when I got uh, this fan uh, this image over here and then I had the fans in the background so these fans were also spinning as you can see let me solo it right here and I show you when I start playing this you will see they are spinning so in order to get the fan made I, I got a picture of this fan from the internet and I tried editing it a little bit so that it could actually spin very well so here is the, the image of the fan is how it looked like I took it in Photoshop and I try to add some texture to it and then the logo and then I made it spin for a while and now that's how it spins and then I duplicated it using this layer as my reference so that I can know where this is supposed to go sorry I used this uh, this image as my reference so that I could easily tell where the fans should go after laying them down I remove all these you will see that the fan are rotating okay so that's how I did the fans now when it came to the lights I had to make these tubes produce light that's why I had to make this light bounce on the uh, on these uh, vertical poles these had to emit light 
So first of all, I, I masked this area because it was giving me some weird things. As you can see when I turned off the transparency, it had some weird things here, so I had to mask this part. And then I applied a solid composite. Well, it, it didn't do a lot of stuff, but yeah, I just felt so good having it over there. And then I add a set channel. So this set channel plugin or this uh, thingy, this effect, it helped me to isolate the saturation only so that in case I would apply a glow effect, here I used a template, something called uh, Deep Glow, it is a plugin rather. Uh, so when I use this plugin, but I had only to make sure that it could only be applied where saturation was and I couldn't just put it anyway because it would also make these lights glow, but I wanted these lights to be glowing uh, using a different effect so I had to only choose saturation over here and it made these lights glow yeah and after that I put it together and well I got a green light for the headlights I also used the same thing but for this I I masked around the areas where I wanted it to be applied and that's why you're seeing these uh, masks around these uh, uh, these headlights whatsoever I don't know whether they're the headlights or what so I applied my deep glow thingy. It's a very nice uh, plugin. Yeah, so now they can give me that light. And yeah, that's how the part of the all this portion of the studio came together. So as you can see, when I uh, let it load, you can see this is how it looks like. But well, it would give my PC a lot of suffering. That's why I had to render this comp alone and I brought it back as this this uh, dot move studio yes that's why i rendered it out and i only decided to only worry about just a layer one layer instead of all these layers and i just had to turn off all these layers now another thing we have we are having the table yeah the table it is also just an image or the desk or anything now there are other elements which are applied on top of it we have the there is a texture as you can see well it's not so visible but it's there and uh, so this texture it was just a bit of scratch on it like, like this here yes I got this layer which uh, to the switches yeah I made it in I changed the blend mode to screen and then I made a mask in only the areas I wanted it to be visible but when I change the mask, you will see that uh, when I say invert, this is the the scratch thingy I used, the scratch uh, texture I used on top of it, and then I masked it so that it can only be visible in an area where I wanted it to be. And when I switch off the invert, it is there, and then I change the blend mode to screen so that it's not that visible or not that dark. Yeah, there it's how I did it. And next on top of the table we have uh, you have another texture yes uh, on top of the table here we have another scratch texture so it's on top well I just turned this into a 3d object and then I, uh, I rotated it I masked only the top part of the table so that it can only be visible on so also on the top so I changed the blend mode to screen and yeah that's how it came out and here I'm having this uh, thingy, it's a shape, but this shape, I just applied a, a layer on top of it and then I made it a little bit dark. If you see, when I switch it off, it's not so dark, but when I switch it back on, it's just a black shape. And that black shape, I, I applied a mask on top of it and then I made it, I feathered it so much so that it could really create some effect. It's a bit subtle, but then you can see that it makes a big difference. When I switch it off, you see it's, you know, as you can see, pretty much see it very well. Yes, uh, next, lastly, we, we have uh, this adjustment layer. I wanted the top of it to glow, so I applied uh, an adjustment layer, and then I only, only threw on this deep glow effect so that it could make it a little bit glowy. You understand so when I put it off you see it's not that glowy but then when I put it back it's like it's it's having that light which is being bounced off so another thing uh, the bed the, the reflection you see you see this reflection everything I changed on the on this layer it will be applied 
on the desk as a reflection okay yeah and you can see it in the end product that it is having a reflection and this reflection is responding to whatever thing that is going on here so in order to, to do that i just got this background layer and then i imported it here inside the the desk and then i made it 3d uh, i rotated it so that it could fit on top of the table i made a mask around the table only and then i reduced the opacity so that it could not be so visible Yes, I, I also thought about uh, a blur effect so that it could, or a first box blur effect so that it could uh, be a little bit blurry, but well, it would make the computer suffer. I just decided to just keep it there and I make it a little bit not that transparent. And yeah, it, uh, it came out to that. You see, it moves backwards and then this table moves upwards, okay? So this is just, uh, this is controlled by two keyframes for the table. We have uh, position and scale. So position, it's getting it from the bottom to the top. And then the scale, it is making it shrink a little bit as it, uh, as also the background, it also shrinks a little bit. That's why uh, it starts at 110 and then it goes to 100. As you can see, so that it could uh, make that 3D effect, which is a little bit dark yeah that's how i did that inside the studio here there are other layers which i haven't applied there are some layers which i only and only apply when i'm done with the designing like motion blur i i never apply motion blur when i'm still designing secondly i have uh, the separating haze okay it's a little bit sad you won't see it but it really adds some difference it creates that you know some glowy thingy down here it's like more like some lighting which is coming from the bottom so that this logo sorry these uh, these words could be visible and um, on also having this separating haze but i usually don't use it because well i'm using this deep glow effect this deep glow effect it's actually really really hungry for the computer's stuff like it would take a lot of time to render it out so i barely use it that much only when it's really necessary I don't have a high-end machine, so I usually find ways of how I could actually make it do the things I want as easy as possible. Yes, and okay, this audio spectrum, I wouldn't talk that much about it, but if you guys want to know how I designed this audio spectrum, you surely let me know in the comments so that I could make a video of how this thing is supposed to be done. Maybe one last thing is the this lower third, this thing down here this this one over here so the way i did it, it uh, it's uh, its main purpose was to be used on photoshop because i wanted to hide the taskbar in photoshop that's why i designed it i designed it in photoshop so that i could always overlay it on top of my photoshop screen recording but pretty much it's just multiple layers of photoshop i designed it in photoshop as you can see over here and uh, yeah the colors they can be changed Okay, it is known that I'm fixed with green. Uh, the colors are being controlled by a uh, tint effect. See, now it is red. If at all I wanna go red, if I wanna go orange, you know, I can also change it to orange. I can change it to any color I want. I can make it glow. These parts, I can make them glow. Okay, so there you have it. That's how I made my studio in After Effects and Photoshop. Thank you for watching. Catch you in the next video. Bye.